This edition of Mac Voices is supported by MacStock Conference and Expo and the Midwest Mac Barbecue, coming to Woodstock, Illinois on July 16 and 17. Join me along with a host of great speakers, including Mac Roundtable members Victor Kayao of the TerraTech Podcast, Adam Christensen of the MacCast, Don McAllister of Screencasts Online, and Allison Sheridan of the NoSillaCast. Learn more and register at MacStock2016.com. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac Community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's always fun when we get together with old friends to talk about new products, and that's what we're going to do this time. Uh, this time, I'm happy to welcome back Ray East of MacPaw. He's going to show us something a little new with the newest version of Gemini. Ray, it's great to see you. Hey, good to see you, Chuck. It's, it, so, it's too bad we only get to do this when you guys bring out new products. We've got to change that. Yeah, we do. We're, more products. Well, more products or align our time zones a little closer because, of course, you're stationed over in the Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I guess about seven hours difference, right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we always have, a, have to do the time zone dance to figure out <laughs> when we can get together. So this time we have uh, an update to, to Gemini, and it's a pretty big update, as I understand. Yeah, it is. Um, the, the first version was released in 2012, so... It's now 2016, and it's uh, it's not just an update. It's it's a completely you know different app. It's uh, it's been completely reworked from the ground up, and you know including the flow, how you, you work with it, um, what it finds. Uh, it's it's just new. I think the first time I became aware of Gemini was when Joe Kissel rec recommended it to me in one of our many discussions, um, and and since then I've I've been using the previous version and and loving it a lot. But uh, I'm going to, for the purposes of this interview, I'm just going to pretend like I know nothing. So give us a quick rundown on exactly what Gemini two does. Sure. So you know, you know, with uh, with SSD drives, we all need more space, right? Um, drives are getting smaller. Uh, files are getting bigger. So, you know, a lot of times when you're working on your computer, you end up with a lot of duplicate files that you don't actually know about, right? You know, it could be an attachment from, from mail that you download a few different times. That creates a new copy each time you open it. Um, it could be, you know, you just, you know, take some photos from, from, uh, from an app and put them in a new folder for Facebook. So you end up with a lot of duplicates in your, on your uh, Mac, and uh, Gemini basically helps you find those. Um, so that's actually kind of the Overall, you know what Gemini was and what it is now, but uh, now it actually finds a lot of similar files. So if you're, you know, taking a selfie with your girlfriend somewhere, um, you know, slightly different angles and all of that, and now find those kinds of pictures and allow you to also choose between those two. So that's kind of a, you know, an overall rundown of what it is. Um, the new version, uh, you know, lets people, you know, free up space, more, you know, more quickly than with the, with the original version. The original version you had to go through and you had to you know handpick all of your files. So now we have uh, a smarter algorithm that basically looks at your files and all your duplicates and says, you know, what are the files that we can definitely for sure uh, delete, you know, right on the spot? You know, just you scan and, and you clean. So um, that's basically, you know, that's that's kind of a high level rundown of, of what it is. That is no small thing, uh, like you said, for SSDs, but just for general housekeeping. At this stage, we've all gathered up so much stuff. And, you know, you're right. You move a photo over here to to upload it or to do this project or that project, and then you do it again and again and again. And pretty soon, you've got a lot of a lot of folders, or excuse me, a lot of files taking up a lot of space in a lot of different folders. Um, sure. So I'm curious, before we, uh, you're going to show us a little bit of it, but before we get into this, you were talking about images of, you know, maybe taken with just at slightly different angles. Uh, do we have slightly different versions of, say, a Pages file or a Keynote file um, when we start talking about those slight differences? Well, I mean, you can have a lot of, you know, similarities in a lot of different types of files, right? For example, you can have, you know, you can have a song, uh, you know, your favorite Aerosmith song, right? That, you know, you have one version that has, you know, one bit rate, the next version has a different bit rate, or for example, you know, you have the greatest hits album and the original album, and let's say, you know, for example, the pause at the beginning of each one is a bit longer, right? Um, you can also have, 
you know, videos that have a different format to them or, you know, a different size. So, yeah, there are a lot of different files that can have similar files, and we find all of those. And what, uh, well, you'll show us as, as far as giving us the options to keep those. Um, maybe I'm, I'm looking ahead, and this may or may not be a good idea, but would I have the option to create aliases to the original file and still leave it where it is, or is that just dangerous? Sure. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, you, you know, what it does is you can, you know, well, there's a, there's a smart selection algorithm that takes and uh, looks at what we can delete safely, and those are basically just, just copies. They're in the same place. You just, you know, press Command C, Command V, and you got a copy, right? Um, we can we can delete those pretty safely. But when it comes to other files, yeah, you, mean, you always, you, you know, you might have moved that to another folder, you know, intentionally. So in Gemini, yeah, you can create hard links back to those files. So it's not an issue at all. So yeah. Okay. Um, probably the best way to do this is just you know look at a couple examples and we'll talk through it. Um, so if you will, let's let's see some of Gemini too. Sure, sounds good. Happy to show you. All right, Chuck. So this is it. This is uh, Gemini too, and I hope you uh, recognize in some way at least the uh, the welcoming screen. I believe it looks very familiar. Excellent. So I mean, here we can basically this is where we add our folders, um, and, and again, it's important to, to to check out that we're actually adding to, to point out that we're actually adding folders as opposed to files, right? So Gemini takes an, an area and looks for duplicates within that area as opposed to taking you know a file and looking for duplicates of that file. Um, so here we can you know click plus and uh, open up a uh, dialog. We just take this and just drag our folder right in to, uh, to Gemini, and that's it. And uh, you know you can add new folders if necessary. You can you know always delete this one, and uh, we're ready to go. So I, I've kind of set up. Just kind of a, a test folder here, so that we get through this quickly. Um, sometimes it can take a bit to scan your to scan your computer. It depends a lot on you know what size your disk is, how many files you have, the size of the files, the types of the files, and so on. So basically, what we're doing here is we're taking that uh, you know that folder. We're looking through all of the files. We're comparing them all against each other, looking for exact duplicates, and looking for you know what we mentioned earlier, the uh, similar files. So this can take a bit. Okay, so while it's doing it, let's be clear. When you threw in the folder for Mac Voices, that's the folder against which you're comparing everything else. No, no, we're actually taking uh, we're taking this folder and looking inside of this folder for duplicate files. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, got it. Yes. Yeah, so, 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 you know, there, there are reasons why we do that. Um, the first is because you know it can take a while to scan your entire computer, right? But you may have, for example, you know, your desktop or your downloads where you know you have a lot of uh, duplicate fo uh, files. So you can take those and you can scan those quicker and get to the results quicker. So that's the idea behind that. Okay, that makes sense. So this is our, uh, our you know our scan results uh, screen, and basically one thing that's very different in Gemini two uh, when compared to Gemini one is that in Gemini one you would, you would search for duplicates, you would find them, you would go into the detailed results, you would go through each one, and you would select what you want to remove. So as mentioned before, we have some smarter algorithms. So with Smart Select, that's what we call it, Smart Select, Smart Cleanup, um, we actually look at all of the exact duplicates. And by exact duplicates, again, what I, what I mean there is when you take a file and you just you know, you know, know copy and paste it in the same area, in the same location. So for those, we, uh, we can actually pretty safely just say, you know, Smart Cleanup, and it just takes them all off. Um, aside from that, you know, when you look over here, you have a, a key that tells you what kind of kinds of files we've found. So we have you know, video, similar files, which we've discussed before, and we'll get into in a minute. Uh, audio, applications, archives, folders, images, documents. So we search for all kinds of files to figure out you know, where, where you're using space that you, know, you could be using for something important. So, um, so you can proceed here with a smart cleanup if you need something quick, right? Like you're downloading a film, you don't have enough space. Uh, and you need space just you know in a few minutes, um, or you can always go into the review results, and that brings us into an interface that's very similar to what we had in the, in Gemini One as far as usability is concerned, as far as the flow is concerned. So here we have uh, to the left all of our different kinds of files. So right now we're in duplicates, and we're looking at exact duplicates again. Those are copies of files that are the exact same. Um, you can go through. You can look for uh, applications that you've got. You can go through archives, audio, documents. Folders, we even find folders that are there are duplicates as well. Images and video. And so below we've actually got similar files. And again, these are these are different from exact duplicates. So we separate those in the interface so that you know you always know when you're deleting something that's just a copy and when you're deleting content that's you know just similar. So 
what, when, when I was speaking about smart cleanup before, you'll notice here to the left, or I'm sorry, to the right, that we don't have uh, any any duplicates selected automatically, right? Any similar files, because again, these aren't copies. These are actually you know different you know pieces of content, and and we can't say you know we can't choose for the user. Hey, we think you want to keep this file, this file uh, as opposed to the other one. So that's one big difference between you know, duplicates and similars is that we take a lot of duplicates, we smart select them, but we don't do that with similars for uh, you know to keep keep users' files in, in, you know intact. So when we go to to all duplicates, uh, each one of these kind of you know comes down, and we can see what smart select is already um, selected for us. And we can go through and we can you know see what it selects, make sure it's the one that we want to keep. Or say for those where we don't have, and actually here we don't have any that aren't smart selected. That's good. Um, you can go through and, and you know and compare those and select them. So as you can see to the to the right here, we have a preview for all kinds of uh, content. If you look up here, you can actually see the the beginning of the uh, the Gemini video. So you can go through and actually take a look at all these files too. So you're not just you know blindly you know choosing one or the other. One thing that we've added in this version, we think that makes a big difference for users, is that you can easily figure out, you know, what are the differences between, you know, file A and file B. So one thing that's that's uh, different, uh, you know, big change in Gemini two, you know, when compared to the first version, is that we have differences. So we can take a look at files and view them from different angles. Basically, we can take a look at this, and you know, we see, for example, that they've got different albums, right? So you might have one, you know, the same song and the greatest hits album versus, you know, the original album. Here we have date, right? So we can look at the date here and figure out, okay, when was the, you know, when was I, when, when, when was I editing this, and which one do I need? Or we can take a look uh, at the size of it, for example. There are a lot of different kinds of differences that you can have, but these, you know, these are the ones that were selected for this particular file, right? These are the ones to be found for this one. So uh, that's basically it for, you know, similars. I'm sorry for duplicates. Let's go take a look at similars. So and similars, you know, you have the same grid that we have. Uh, you know, in, in that view, but you can also switch over here. This is also a big difference between you know Gemini one and, and two. You can actually take a look at them. You know, this kind in this kind of you know, I guess you could say it, kind of a, a grid view, and you open those up. And again, up at the top, we can view them. We can see how they differ. So the dimensions here differ, the size differs, and we can see the content here. And we can go through and say, okay, uh, you know, I want to delete this one. I want to delete this one. So that's a uh, big difference. You can go through easily and just you know click the uh, the right or the left button and go through and figure out what you want to delete, comparing all those files. Now this is something interesting that we've added to the new version that's uh, pretty big, and it's uh, you know it's kind of an it's not, we wouldn't call it AI, but it, you know what this does is it looks at, at your selections, right? It looks at your behavior and sees that you know we've been selecting images of larger dimensions, right? So the question here is, okay, we see that you're selecting images that have larger dimensions. Do you want us to select, you know, in all of these groups, do you want us to select all of them that have larger dimensions? And so we can either say yes, let's go for it. We can say no, and we can also click applies to future scans too. So the app, as you work with the app, it also learns, you know, how you choose your files, how you delete, you know, your duplicates. So let's just uh, click apply to future scans too. Click OK. Right, so let's go back out. Let's take a look. So if you go down and look through all these similars now, you'll see that we have a lot of them that are uh, now filled out with uh, selected similar files because it takes your behavior and, and you know it takes your preference there and applies it to everything. But it's not automatically going to act on that until I tell it to. It just has selected those as likely candidates for the way I've behaved in the past. Right, absolutely. So it always asks you, right? Like again, in that, in that dialogue, you can say yes for now, right? Like if, I, if this is what I'm doing now, if I'm deleting larger dimensions now, we'll just do it now. Um, but we also give the user, if they want to in the future, right? If that's usually their their kind of uh, standard behavior, you know, the way that they you know view their files and delete them and so on. We do uh, you know allow them if they want to to go in there and uh, add those to the future. Now you can actually go in here in a smart selection and always, you know, remove that, change that at any point in time. So that's a big thing. You know, we don't want to definitely want to, you know, mess with the users' files and uh, do anything, you know, destructive to them. So, so um, on that uh, note, let's go ahead and get some uh, get some space cleaned up. So here we just click remove, 
and we go into uh, into deleting. Now this is interesting. We just saw pop up here, right? You see that in the right hand corner. So this is a uh, achievement. So one thing that uh, users really like these days, and I think when it comes to a, you know a lot of games or when it comes to uh, more social programs, they like achievements, right? They like to see that they're doing things in the program, they're getting achievements for that, they're getting rewards for things that they do. So uh, this is kind of you know something new. You don't usually see this in a lot of you know, desktop applications, but we thought that Gemini, uh, this is a, this is a great fix, right? When you have Gemini. And, and you know gamification and make it fun, right? You, you don't just want to free up space. You want to love your your apps. You want to you know you like your Mac. You bought a Mac because you don't like Windows because they're more beautiful. They're they're more they're they're easier to use. Um, so here we've got achievements actually, and you can go through and you can uh, see which ones you achieved. You know you get a lot of them. For example, if you look at Captain, right? Uh, this is when you scan 150 gigabytes of files. For example, well, let's say for example. Expert scanner, so you've scanned at least five times. So as you go through your app, you're going to see that you know uh, you're getting these achievements, and there are actually a lot of little Easter eggs hidden inside of uh, Gemini, uh, sorry Gemini, that you can find you know with, and get achievements for. So it's just kind of a little fun thing to, to make users you know, enjoy it a little more. So another thing that's important um, when it comes to you know the new version and and how we work is before Gemini would take. Uh, apps and delete them, right? So, but now we take all these files and we actually just move them to the trash. And it's easy to go back after you've deleted them and say, put them back. Uh, you can put them all back if you want to. So you can go through and, uh, and take a look at everything that you that you've deleted and, and you know easily put them back or just empty out your trash if, if you know if you're good to go. That's that's huge right there because we've all done that, especially if we're in the getting to know phase with utilities, where you hit something and then you think, "Oh my God, I, I didn't understand. It's gone." Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And, and we, you know, and and it's important to you know to save you know save people from that experience, right? Um, sometimes you're just in a hurry again. You're downloading a film. You need space, right? So you could end up you know selecting the wrong one. So you always have the chance to go back and say, "Okay, am I totally sure that's exactly what I wanted to delete?" You can always go back and change that. So yeah, that's that's important. And uh, from here, actually, you know, you know, we've we've cleaned two gigabytes, right? Um, but we've we've actually got seven hundred remaining. So we can always go back and uh, delete more if we need to. So that's basically Gemini in a nutshell. And uh, as you can see, it's changed a lot as far as you know the flow is concerned, as far as functionality. So we're thinking it's going to be it's going to be big. A few questions. Sure. Um, first of all, on the on the achievements and all that, you mentioned that Gemini has some Easter eggs in it. We're talking about just fun Easter eggs, right? There's nothing like you have to do so many deletions to suddenly unlock a new capability. No, 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 no. So the thing about achievements here is it's not you know, you know, you get Gemini and you have Gemini, right? Gemini. Um, there's 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 nothing here that you have to unlock. So you know. The achievements are just for entertainment purposes, just to make the experience more, you know, a little more fun. It has nothing to do with unlocking, you know, new functionality and stuff like that. So, um, at the end, when you do get all your achievements, you do get a fun little Easter egg as well. But there's definitely nothing that's, you know, that's that's locked up in Gemini that's, you know, being held, you know, and and, and, and you know, in replacement for for some some achievements. So it's just it's just for the fun factor. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to be very clear on that. It, it strikes me, Ray, that well, a lot of these programs that do something similar, they do block level comparisons. And first of all, they don't do the the, the similars. So that that to me is also huge. But you seem to be doing a little bit of everything. You, you're looking at all the metadata. Um, you're probably doing block block level as well. I would I would guess, but I don't know. Um, and and as you said, there's so many different kinds of files out there. How do you how do you keep track of all the different kinds of metadata that can be embedded in any given file? Sure. I mean, well, it, it all starts from you know what the what the user uh, does, right? Uh, from you know from day to day, and uh, the way they work with their files. So we take a look and, and we see what, what what matters to the user. I mean, there's a lot of there are a lot of things that we could look at, right? Um, but we look at the most important things again for. You know, for pictures, you know, you want to make sure they have a large size. You might want to use it as your desktop background, or you might want to, you know, crop it in uh, in Photoshop and you know get a better angle on it, right? So you don't want to, uh, you know, just delete any picture, right? You want to see the, the dimension itself. So we took a look at what, what's important to users, and we, and we started looking at those. Um, for example, here you can see that we have 
differences based on the actual extension, right? So for photographers, for example, uh, they'll want to keep a lot of times, you know, their, their raw files and, and get rid of the JPEGs that they have or the service files that they had. Um, and for other users, for example, those who, you know, aren't as professional, you know, or are, are doing photography more, you know, for fun, they might want to do the exact opposite. They might want to, you know, get rid of the, the heavy raw files and keep the JPEGs, for example. So we basically, yeah, we just looked at, you know, what the users need and figured, you know, that's what we need to be looking at. And that's what we searched for. So, Okay. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's really, I guess the thing that really is is so intriguing to me is, and you described it so well earlier, that with, with audio files, for example, you might have exactly the same track, but a different number of seconds or a different a period of time before. Sure. Sure. Um, and at the cropping of the photos is a little more obvious, but there's so many things that you're right. They get down to they're so similar, but wow, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm not deleting anything that I don't want to lose. And it looks like you're doing taking every step you can possibly take not to have that happen. Absolutely, absolutely. We definitely want to you know make sure that when you when you jump into Gemini, you know that you know you've got control over everything. Um, Jim and I will help you in the process, but it's not going to take, it's not going to delete your files. It's not going to delete things that you want to keep or that you, you know, that you may want to keep. So yeah, that's, that's something that's been very important, you know, when we were uh, creating the smart selection and the smart cleanup algorithms was how do we do this in a way that's not destructive for the user? So and we've come up with it. So, How many times do I need to use this for it to start to recognize what I've done in the past? Or is that something that I control with a bit of uh, fine grain control? You mean with the uh, the smart selection, the, the pop-up that came up and, and asked us about selecting a certain uh, type of file? No, the, the idea that um, that my behavior in the past has been that I'm always going to delete smaller files than the largest ones, the uh, safer photos, that, you know, I'm always going to want to retain the largest file. Sure. I think, it, you know, I think that the way we've implemented uh, the kind of the smart selection is that, you know, it, it alerts you. It says, hey, we're, we noticed that you're doing something. In a pattern, right? Um, if you're just going through and you're selecting files, you're not thinking about, you know, usually about the big picture, right? Like, okay, right now I'm going through and I'm deleting all the smaller files or all of the smaller files, you know, when it comes to file size. Um, so we kind of, you know, that functionality not only helps you um, use that in the future and, and now to get rid of duplicates, you know, quicker, but it also helps you realize, you know, what's important to you and what you're actually doing so that you know, when you go through and you're deleting files each time, it gets, you know, quicker, it gets easier, and, and uh, it's more pleasant, so. Ray, this seems like one of those things that I, I want to go and play with because I want to get space back on all my drives, not just my solid states. Um, this is probably very unfair, but it's because it depends on so many different factors. But there's no reason that I can't throw my hard drive, my entire hard drive folder into Gemini and let it do the scan. I might want to walk away for a while, but it'll come back and it'll scan everything. Yeah, absolutely. It will scan uh, anything you put into it, really. Um, and actually, speaking to your point about you know wanting to all of your drives, we also do support, uh, of course, you know, external drives. So you can also throw those in as well and uh, find duplicates anywhere you have them. So oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, I, I'm sure my my iTunes library has duplicates all over the place, uh, especially given some of the iCloud syncing challenges. Um, and it, yet you, you're afraid to go in because you never know what may go away if you're not careful. Right. So what kind of pricing do we have for, for Gemini 2? So Gemini 2, uh, a single copy, uh, is nineteen ninety five, And it's going to be available on the Mac App Store and on our site. So there are two versions there. Um, wherever users you know prefer to, to purchase, they can definitely come to, to, to either 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 space. So, but there is feature parity. Sorry, I, there is the, the feature sets are, are all the same. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the features are the exact same. So there's no issue there uh, with sandbox or anything like that. So it's it's the same throughout. Okay, uh, any upgrade upgrading price for Gemini the original Gemini users? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if it weren't for the for the use of the first version, we wouldn't have a second version. So um, we definitely have an upgrade price. Uh, to be honest, the upgrade here is a bit tough because we've got you know an app that's in the Mac App Store and on our site, right? And of course, developers and users, you know, together they know you know the issues with the Mac App Store. So we do have an upgrade price at fifty percent off, nine ninety five, and we're going to have a one week fifty uh, percent off sale in the Mac App Store and on our site. 
uh, to allow those users who want to upgrade to the Mac App Store uh, to do that in the Mac App Store. Um, however, if they don't, if they don't miss, you know, if they end up missing that one week, they still have the discount. It's always a lifetime discount. So we've actually created functionality where if you have on your computer Gemini 1 and you, you know, launch Gemini 2, then you're actually going to get uh, an offer to upgrade at that price on our site. So um, we, 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 we put a lot of thought into how we do this and make sure that, you know, no users left behind. So. We've we've had a couple of talks up with developers about this, and I, I I'm always want to step back and make sure we get it right. So, if I've if I bought Gemini from directly from MacPaw, I've it just works like anything else does. But if I bought it through the App Store, I can either buy it again through the App Store, but at the discounted price for the limited time, or come back to MacPaw and have it upgraded that way for the same price. Right, so we're upgrading all users from the Mac App Store and our site version from, from Gemini 1 to Gemini 2 at the low, at the, at the discounted price. So yeah, um, users who, who use you know, Mac Paul, I'm sorry, Gemini 1 from the Mac Paul site, um, they can upgrade at that price as well. And for Mac App Store users, they can also upgrade during the first week uh, at 50% off in the Mac App Store if they prefer that version. Or they can uh, come directly to us and we'll give them the same exact price as you know, all the other users so they're not jaded. Excellent, excellent. It's too bad we have to jump through all these hoops, but you got to. And it is, it is, and it's an important thing that you know developers have been talking uh, a lot about the last few years. You know, and just we don't seem to be getting any traction from Apple there. I think you know to to create you know decent upgrade functionality that that in the end will only help the user. Yeah. Well, and you just just like so many others, you found a way around it that seems fair to everyone, doesn't penalize or benefit anyone from buying wherever they happen to buy it the first time. It's just, you know, it, it, it it's, it's just hoops to jump through. Right, right, exactly. So, yeah. So, gee, this uh, this means Gemini two. Gemini goes to Gemini two. Um, give us a quick rundown of your other apps too, and where they stand. Yeah. So. Um you know, we, we are the developers of Mac. We recently, well, recently, about a year ago, we released the third version of that. Um, it is not available in the App Store. It is only available from our site uh, due to, again, some, you know, the issues that developers have been raising with that for, for quite a while. So other apps that we've got besides Gemini and Clean Mac uh, 3 are Encrypto. It's actually a, a free app that's available in the App Store where you can, you know, take files and encrypt them before you send them to somebody. So you can, you know, send them and email them, you know, uh, financial document and then call them on the phone so this is the password so that you know that that that, that information is safe between point a and point b uh, we've got hider which also is in that same kind of uh kind of in the same space where you can hide files you can encrypt them and keep them on your computer so that if you get, get stolen um you're not worrying about things if you know if you're if you're if you're if somebody gets to your computer uh, that you don't want seeing, you know, certain financial files and so on, they can also uh, be hidden easily and encrypted. Uh, we've also got, uh, for the, uh, the the iPhone, we've got Listen Player, which is, you know, Apple Music, right? It's a great app. Um, but the thing is, you know, a lot of times we're listening to music when, when we're in movement, right? We're either, you know, running or we're in the car or we're, you know, jumping between classes, you know, at the university, uh, and listen basically takes um, and makes the player, you know, a very gesture-based thing. So you know, one swipe to the right, one swipe to the left, and you're changing your songs. Uh, so it's basically a player that you can use without having to look at it. Uh, we've also got Clean My PC and Clean My Mac Classic for users uh, legacy versions of, uh, of the app. Uh, I'm sorry, of, of Mac OS. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's that's the rundown of, of of our apps. And we've also got uh, for developers, we've got DevMate. Which is actually a very important uh, part of you know what we do here at Backbone and how in the success of our products. It's it's what stands behind the products when it comes to activation, when it comes to uh, gathering crash reports, when it comes to gathering user feedback, when it comes to uh, you know making upgrades easy and uh, seamless like we have in Gemini two and in Gemini Mac three. Where basically a user can go into Gemini one, you see an upgrade dialog. If you want to upgrade, you can, and everything happens right there inside the app. And it, you can pay for it right in the app. You can it downloads itself right into the app. It, it closes and launches the next, you know, app, uh, the next version. So that's also DevMate, and that's kind of our B two B sector. So that's uh, that's a rundown of of, uh, of our apps. You guys are just determined to try to keep me productive and organized, aren't you? We are. You know, that's that's, that's our mission. Definitely, is to, to help users, you know, keep their Macs clean and, and, and in order. And uh, that's that's what we do. 
well, we, we all appreciate it because I think a lot of us can use all the help we can get. And I, I know one, you're talking to one right now. The, the website, obviously, the, the Mac App Store, as we sp spoke about, but for folks that want to buy straight from MacPaw, the website is? Sure, MacPaw.com, or you can go straight to MacPaw.com slash Gemini, and you can find all the information that you need as far as, you know, if you're a new user, if you want to find out more about the app, you want to watch a video about it, learn about the features, if you just want to do, you know, if you want to just download it for free, um, and, you know, for the upgrade as well. So they can find all the information there. Perfect, perfect. Are you in, or any of the team uh, coming over for WWDC this year? We are. We, uh, we're always there, and we're always going to be there. So we do have uh, a large part of the team coming over for that. And uh, we're definitely going to see you there, I hope. Are you coming this I've, year? Absolutely, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Great. So, so folks, you may see Ray sooner than sooner than later, and we may standing be beside each other this time instead of uh, across Skype. <laughs> Sounds great. Ray, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for the tour of, of Gemini 2. You too. Thanks for having us. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We'll be back with more soon. We'll be back with Ray probably from, from uh, San Francisco and uh, WWDC. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Mac Voices blog. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Do more with your Apple tech by subscribing to the free Mac Voices magazine on Flipboard by visiting macvoices.com slash magazine. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.